Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's Dave from iClass Pro here. Uh, we're excited to kick off our very first Let's Talk Pro webinar of the year. And today I'm going to be talking you through our most highly anticipated feature, the appointments uh, module. So many of you have been asking for an easier and faster way to manage one time and recurring private lessons. iClass Pro's appointments feature allows you to do just that while delivering an even better booking experience for your customers. From automated notifications, quick reporting access to track instructor performance, cancellations and revenue, to check-in kiosk capabilities, this new appointments feature can truly help elevate your business to the next level. I can't wait for you to all to discover and learn what all this feature has to offer. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to make a note in the chat box and our experts will be happy to respond on there or we can address some of this at the end of the session. So with that said, let's get started. So what are appointments? So simply put, appointments are one-off or recurring private or semi-private lessons with a specific instructor. iClass Pro's appointments feature allows you to create these appointment time slots and then create one-time or recurring bookings for them. So you may be thinking, why would I use the appointments feature when all along I've been handling private and semi-private appointments as classes or camps? While you can certainly continue to do it that way, appointments do have some distinct advantages when it comes to enrollments and billing. Uh, while class enrollments are intended to be ongoing and camp enrollments are intended to last only a limited time, appointment bookings can either be one time or recurring depending on how they're configured. Appointments can be set up as true private lessons one-on-one -on -one, or as semi-private. The semi-privates can be further configured so that you can have multiple students book the same time slot or a single student can book the time slot and then invite other students to attend as well, up to the maximum allowed occupancy. And like classes, appointments are compatible with punch passes. However, unlike classes, for appointments, you can choose to allow customers to cancel or reschedule their appointments, and the system can be configured to charge a cancellation fee if they choose to do so. So some good advantages there of using the appointments uh, rather than classes or camps for that. So let's get straight into how appointments work and how they're configured. So I'm going to share my screen here. Now, to use the appointments feature, you first need to configure several different settings to determine how the system is going to handle the various options related to appointments. Uh, to configure these options, we're going to navigate to the user menu. Then we're going to go to settings, setup, and appointment settings. Now, within appointment settings, there are several areas here to configure. We have the general appointment settings, and these define how the system is going to handle certain tasks related to appointments, including whether blackout dates will apply to appointments, whether a fee should be charged for cancellations, and if so, how much that fee will be, whether you're going to charge a cancellation fee for rescheduled appointments, and then you have uh, the ability here to send an appointment reminder uh, X many days prior to the appointment and send an appointment follow-up X many days after the appointment. And we have email templates in there uh, to handle that. If you configure that and you say you want to send an appointment reminder two days prior to their appointment, that customer will get an email from you two days before the appointment reminding them uh, that that appointment is going to happen and then a follow-up if you wish as well. You can also set your facility availability hours. And this sets when you allow private appointments or appointments in general to happen within your facility. Uh, this is important because uh, when your staff members go to create the appointments, unless they have permission to do so, they will not be able to create any time slots outside of those availability hours. Uh, time, uh, the appointments feature also uh, defines a new item called a service, and a service defines the specific intention of the appointment. Each appointment's linked to a specific service, and then that service name is also displayed on your customer portal in place of the word appointments, sort of similar to how you use camp types to define different types of camps and group them together. Lastly, in this section, you have your pricing schedules. Now, pricing schedules are how iClass Pro's appointments feature determines how much to charge for appointments, including multi-student uh, the uh, group appointments with multiple students. At least one pricing schedule must be created before an appointment can be created and saved. So pricing schedules 
they allow for a single defined fee that's charged for each time slot that's booked. So here for my private training bars, I charge $30 per time slot. If this was a, an appointment that allowed for what we call a group appointment, and we'll cover that a little bit later, we would charge a grand total of $60 for that uh, if one student booked that and then invited another student to attend. So the ability to define all of this on one pricing schedule allows you to use that same pricing schedule for both private lessons and semi-private lessons just by adjusting that maximum number of bookings allowed. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, now, outside of this area, there's also a couple of other settings uh, that you'll want to consider when setting up your appointments. Uh, first of all is your appointments policy. So here under your policies in your family, now there is an appointments policy. Uh, we, there's a sample in there, uh, but you'll want to customize that specifically for your business. And this policy is only displayed the first time a customer books an appointment. If they never book an appointment, they never see the appointment policy. They'll only see the billing authorization, rules, terms, conditions, and waiver, just like it currently acts. Uh, once they do accept this policy, they'll only ever see it again if that policy is updated, uh, similar to how the other policies work. There are some new staff permissions that you can assign either individually to staff members uh, or to a user group. Uh, and these are, uh, there's a page permission, obviously, to allow them to access the appointments page. Once they're on the appointments page, there are some task permissions and report permissions. So your task, appoint, uh, task permissions include the ability to actually create, a, uh, to view appointments. Uh, so you have, uh, they don't have any ability at all, they can see them or they can interact with them, create new ones, uh, create bookings. There's a setting for uh, staff members being able to control their own appointments. They may not be able to edit other people's appointments, but they might be able to control their own. Uh, ability to delete appointments can be granted or denied. Uh, the ability to override the cancellation fee and the ability to override the appointment daily schedule. So that's where I mentioned earlier earlier, once you set that, uh, the operating hours, that's the permission that would allow uh, somebody to override that and create an appointment outside of that. Then you, uh, we have introduced some uh, new reports along with this feature. Uh, so there is an instructor appointment schedule report, an appointment cancellation and no-shows report, and then in the financial report section, there is an appointment revenue report. There are individual permissions for each of those. So you'll want to look into all of that whenever you're setting this up. And lastly, new email templates. Uh, obviously, if we're going to be sending out notification to customers, uh, whether it's that uh, reminder email or the follow-up, or even just letting them know about the booking in the first place, you're going to want to customize the email templates for those. So those are here under setup, general settings, email templates, and there are emails in both the iClass Pro section. So we have the appointment cancellation, appointment follow-up, appointment no-show, appointment reminder, appointment rescheduled. Uh, and then further down, we have the invitation to a group appointment. And we'll get into that a little bit later when we discuss group appointments. But this is the email that is sent to the other students who are being invited to attend that appointment. This is the only template uh, that I'm going to mention here that is used by both the, um, the office portal and the customer portal. Because we do allow if somebody books their appointment through the customer portal, they can send the invitations themselves. Uh, so this is the email template that will be used for that. And then just your general new appointment email uh, template. Under the customer portal tab, then we also have appointment booking approved and appointment booking requested. Uh, and those are sent just as they're said, uh, just as they mentioned there in the parentheses. If the appointment booking is automatically approved, they receive the approved. If it's submitted as a request that needs to be followed up on, it, they get the request email. And that way the verbiage applies to the particular situation. So now that we've gone through, we've configured the appointments themselves, we've taken care of a little uh, upkeep with the uh, email templates and staff permissions. Now we're ready to create appointments. So to do this, we're going to navigate here to the appointments page from the navigation toolbar at the top. Before we go any further, I do want to make a quick note here about terminology because you may hear me go back and forth between these terms uh, throughout this presentation. So an appointment itself is an established lesson, an established lesson with a specific instructor 
with defined criteria that will be used to approve the booking request, pricing information, and schedule details, such as which day or days of the week the lesson will occur and at what time. An appointment time slot is the exact date and time for which the lesson is being booked. So if you have an appointment that is recurring over several days, they will have multiple appointment time slots associated with it. So uh, just a little uh, clarifier there. If you hear the term time slot, it's referring to the exact date that's being booked. If it's the appointment as a whole, then that applies to all time slots attached to that appointment. So now to create an appointment, we're going to go here to new appointment, and this opens the create appointment window. From here, we're going to enter a few specific details. So we have the appointment name. So we're going to go ahead and I want to let it known, be known right at the beginning. This is a private lesson uh, with Richard Bouquet. Uh, enter the appointment details. So we have, we're going to define the occupancy. If this is a true one on one, maximum occupancy is one. If you're going to make this a group lesson, if you're going to allow multiple students to enroll in it, then this occupancy needs to be more than one. Minimum age, we will set that here. We'll say between five and 15. And uh, then we have a, we'll define the gender there. This will be co-ed. So we're going to assign the instructor. So this is with Richard Bouquet. Uh, we're going to define a service here. This is a private training. We're going to select a program for our financials. So this is appointments. And then we're going to choose a pricing schedule. I do want you to notice here that unlike when you set up classes and camps, whenever I choose each of these instructor service program pricing schedule zone, there's an option there for new. So if I get in here and start creating the appointment and I realize I don't have the right pricing schedule created already, I can create it from here without having to abandon it and then come back in. So that's another advantage that appointments have over setting them up as classes and camps. So in this case, though, I'm going to use the uh, private semi-private tumbling pricing schedule, and this is going to take place in the purple room. Now, if I want to, I can enter a description if I'm going to show appointments on the customer portal. And that's important to note here. Uh, just like classes and camps, you're going to have the ability to determine whether these appointments show on the customer portal, whether customers are going to be allowed to book themselves into them or whether you're even going to show appointments on the customer portal or not. We've introduced new settings to those, and we're going to go into that a little bit further on whenever we get into the customer portal portion of this. So right now, I'm going to leave that description blank, but now I'm going to define the schedule. So we have a frequency and a date and time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this as a one-time appointment. I'm going to have it happen on February the 1st. And it's going to be at 9 o'clock a.m. And it's going to last for 30 minutes. So I'm going to say it's until 930. Now, just to get a little bit here uh, into a little bit more terminology here, we have the option up here for recurring or one time. So one time, truly one time. This appointment is only going to happen one time. It's going to be on February 1st, uh, and it's going to be at this time. However, if this is going to be ongoing, either for the same student or if the instructor has this time available every week and wants people to be able to book in for one-on-ones, I could set that to be recurring. And then I can say this is going to recur every single day uh, or, you know, every two days, every three days, uh, every week. And if I choose week, I can say it's going to happen the Monday of every first week, every second week, every third week, uh, or monthly. And I can say it's going to happen on the nth day of the month, so uh, of the week. So I can say it's going to happen on the third day of the week every month. Or I can say it's going to happen on the 10th of every month or every second month. So we have a lot of flexibility here. But I'm going to go and set this to one time. Uh, one time uh, really uh, will probably be used most often, I would think, uh, if an instructor maybe is working with a student and they decide maybe they just need a little extra help to master one specific skill, that might be a good time to use just a one-time appointment. Okay, so now uh, we're going to go into the other details down here. And like I mentioned earlier, just like with classes, camps, you can choose to show to customers, you can choose to allow web registration. Uh, I'm going to just pause here for just a second to explain about group appointment. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you choose a group appointment, number one, your occupancy has to be more than one. But also, you can leave this setting enabled or disabled with 
an occupancy of higher than one. If the settings enabled, if I say this is a group appointment, then the booking will only allow a single student to book for it. And that student's going to be charged the maximum amount based on the total occupancy for the appointment, but then they're going to be allowed to invite other people to attend up to that maximum enrollment. So if I have maximum enrollment of three, this is a group appointment. Student one books it, they can invite two more students. If the setting is disabled and I have a maximum, maximum occupancy of three, then uh, I, three separate students can book into this appointment and each of them are going to be charged that single time slot price, the one that was in column one of our pricing schedule. So uh, important to remember the difference there uh, if your occupancy is more than one. So then we, uh, you can also attach keywords, you can attach promo codes, you can uh, attach skill trees. Important to note that uh, just like uh, with classes and uh, camps, if there is a tax rate associated with the program, then uh, that tax rate will apply to the appointment as well. So at this point, then we will save the appointment. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose save. And because this is a one-time appointment, it is only going to create a single time slot for it. If this were a recurring appointment, the system would create a separate time slot for every time that it's going to book, that it's going to meet within the defined meeting dates. So if I go back here to my appointments page, then I will see here uh, this right now between the 25th, the 24th of next month. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh because it did not show up there. Okay. My apologies, we're going to look into uh, what happened there. So uh, let's go ahead, though, and move forward. And let's take a look, just like with classes and camps, again, once you've created an appointment, you can duplicate it. So I'm going to open up this other appointment I have. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here, and I'm going to choose duplicate appointment. When I duplicate it, it makes an exact copy of all of the settings. So it's going to append that word copy onto here. So in this case, though, I want this one to also be for Richard Bouquet. I want to make this a group appointment. So I'm going to set that maximum occupancy to three. I'm going to change my instructor to Richard Bouquet. I'm going to uh, change the service from private training tumbling to small group training because now it's a group appointment. I'm going to make that the purple room again. And everything else, I'm going to leave the same. Uh, except in this case, it's a recurring appointment because the one I copied was, and it happens every week, and uh, it's between 9 and 9.30 a.m. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and this time I'm going to check group appointment, and now I'm going to save. Oh, start date cannot be in the past. That's because the uh, camp, the uh, appointment I duplicated uh, was created sooner, uh, last month, actually. So I'm going to change that to today and save. Okay, so it tells me appointment created. Now, if I go back here to the appointments page, I'll see both of them. I have the private training with Richard Bucket and the, uh, the private training with Norman Clegg. So from here, I can book into the appointment and I can do that one of two ways, uh, actually one of three ways. Um, so you can do that from the family's page, the student's page, just like you do with classes and camps. There is an option under the enrollment section to for a new appointment booking. You can do that either from families or students. I'm going to walk you through doing it on the appointments page just so you'll uh, be able to see that. So we have here a, uh, a booking here. Uh, there is a book button. So I'm going to click the book button. This is going to launch the book appointment screen. And on the screen, I'm going to choose the student. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to choose Norm Clegg. So I'm going to select him. You'll notice there I also have the option to create a new student if that student did not exist. And then I am going to go down here. And if this uh, were a recurring appointment, I could choose all the dates I want him to attend. Uh, and then if I need to, I can override the pricing schedule and I can choose whether to send the booking email. And then I'm going to go ahead and save, save and charge or close. Save just saves it and creates it, but does not charge for it. 
save and charge will launch your new charge window, just like it does for classes and camps. Uh, that creating that charge works just like it does for creating any other tuition charge, except there's a new appointments line item associated. So you'll need to be sure to choose that line item type if you do it this way. And then there's close, which just abandons the whole thing. I'm going to save, but I'm not going to charge right now. Okay. And the reason I did that is, is twofold. So first of all, you'll notice I have booked this. There were three available spots, but it's not allowing me to book anybody else. That's because it's a group appointment and Norm Clegg has booked the first spot. Now, if Norm Clegg, if as if Norm, if uh, Norm Clegg's parents are standing there and they're like, "Well, we want to go ahead and invite these other students to attend," the staff member can come here. They can click on the student name, and from here there is a group section now, and you can enter email, phone, and name for each student, or you can select the participant from those that already exist. When you send invite. That sends an invitation to those families that will have a link they follow to accept the invitation and if they need to to create an account if they don't already have one so that's how the group appointments part is handled now if i need to do billing as i mentioned you can do it straight from the ledger with the new charge window or there is now a, a transactions task for appointment tuition charges works similarly to how camps and classes do we're going to choose a charge category so let's say I am billing everybody who will be active in February. In the month of February 2023, I would set my charge date and my due date. Now, like we do for camps, there is the ability here, additional options. If I tick this box to bill only selected appointments, it's going to look at all the appointments that are uh, that are active and I can choose just to bill for those. If I leave that unchecked, it will look for any appointments that will meet within the month of February. So then I would run a preview. And uh, if I'm happy with it, I would process it to place those charges on the ledger. And then it, that just becomes part of my monthly billing. Now, it's important to say this because when you charge the student, if somebody books themselves through the customer portal or if the staff member hits that save and charge, they're only charged for their first month of, of, uh, of time slots. You're still going to need to come in each month if it is an ongoing appointment, which you can have recurring appointments without end dates, uh, then you will need to still charge them each month for those subsequent appointment time slots. So uh, that is, you'll just make this part of your monthly billing procedure. You'll come in, you'll run your class billing, you'll run your camp billing if you do appointments billing, anniversary charges, and then you would run your payments task to collect payment for all of those. Okay, so uh, the other thing within the office portal here is I mentioned earlier that punch passes can be used with appointments and redeeming a punch pass for an appointment is exactly the same as redeeming it for anything else within the office portal. You would just go to the students or families page. You would expand that student's enrollments and you would go down to the student passes section, choose which pass you want to redeem and then you would choose to punch in any appointments would still would appear uh, here on this list of available appointments. Uh, so you would just choose it from there, you would punch in, it would create the enrollment and, and take a pass, uh, take a punch off of the pass. So uh, it's important to note that uh, Whenever you're doing that, the appointments are going to show up. They're only going to show up on the dates that they occur. You might notice whenever I went to go punch in here, none of them were coming up, and that's because there was no appointments available on the 25th. So if I change that date here, we know we created one for February 1st. Then when it refreshes that and we go to the next page, oh, it's not there. Okay, uh, that's because we've already booked it. Very smart. Okay. Anyway, uh, you'll see the blue here represents classes. Uh, the main point I wanted to make here is that appointments will have a little purple bar there next to it to designate which ones are appointments. Okay. From the appointments page, we've also updated a few things. There are some quick tools across the bottom of the page. If we select one or more appointments, we have some quick tools pop up here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see those a bit better. Some of these are pretty standard. We have the uh, email blast, send an email blast to students who are enrolled in these particular appointments. 
send an SMS message, send a push notification, send a voice broadcast. I uh, use the quick edit tool to edit appointment settings in bulk. So let me zoom back out here just a little bit and see, show you what that looks like. If I click here, then I can edit instructor service program zone pricing schedule add the online settings to show to uh, customers, allow group appointment or allow web registration. Uh, so I can change those in bulk by selecting and then hitting save. And then the last one here, or the last two here are cancel selected time slot bookings. Uh, and whenever you do that, there's an option to send an email or SMS notification to the students who would be affected by that cancellation. Uh, same, you can also send an appointment reminder and again, via email or SMS. Um, so whenever you click that, that would give you the option to notify all of these customers, send a reminder uh, about their upcoming appointments. So uh, just a reminder that if you do use these quick tools and you choose to send either an email blast or a general SMS message, that's going to honor the family's opt-in, opt-out settings. If they've opted out of email blasts, they're not going to receive it. If they've opted not to receive SMS messages, they're not going to receive it. However, if you're sending a reminder or you cancel an appointment, that does not uh, honor that setting because those are considered enrollment related. And so at that point, they're going to rescind the notification. They're going to receive the notification that, hey, your appointment got canceled uh, or your uh, appointment. Uh, this is just a reminder about your appointment because those are enrollment related and they do not abide by those settings. So uh, if that helps you decide which is the best route to take here uh, to make sure everybody gets notified, it's important to note. Okay, so at this point, we've configured your basic appointment settings. We've learned how to use it in the office portal. Uh, however, if you want customers to be able to book and manage appointments for themselves within the customer portal, there's a few more settings that we need to configure. So we're gonna go here to the uh, user menu. We're gonna go to settings. Then we're gonna go here to customer portal, other settings. And first of all, in the general settings area, there is a new setting here to show appointments and allow visitors to register for them. Very important to enable that if you want customers to be able to do uh, to manage their appointments, because if you don't do this, it does not matter what setting you put on the appointment itself about showing on the customer portal and allowing web registration. They're not going to be able to see it if this is not enabled. Once that's enabled, and if you do enable it, be sure to save your setting there at the bottom of that section. Then there is there are two additional areas here now down at the bottom appointment registration. And then there is also an appointment filter section. So let's just take a quick look here. Appointment registration, you have your general appointment settings. So we can limit the start date of appointments to at least X many days from today. We can limit the start date to at most X many days from today. So that allows you to set a window of how close to the actual appointment time people can, can book an appointment. You can choose to auto approve appointments based on the criteria that you defined. Uh, and whether there's an opening available. You can allow customers to cancel appointments and they have, and you can set a time frame for that, that they have to do it within X many days, X many hours, X many minutes of the appointment start time. Um, you can allow them to reschedule. If, they, uh, if you allow that, again, reschedule time frame, days, hours, and minutes. But important to note, if they choose to reschedule, they can only reschedule for an appointment with the same instructor attached to the same service. And we did that because we're assuming that for some services, you may charge more. And so you won't want to charge somebody for a lesser costing appointment and then allow them to reschedule into one that normally costs more. Uh, you can choose to auto approve the rescheduled appointments, uh, again, based on the criteria. Uh, and then you can choose to send an email notification upon the auto approved rescheduled appointment to the email address of the appointment location. So this is uh, just like with classes and camps, uh, if they reschedule, you you as the business owner are going to get an email sent to the email address attached to the location where that appointment is going to take place. However, there is a new setting here to send a confirmation email to the instructor. We do not have this anywhere else in the system right now. If somebody reschedules their appointment, the instructor can also get an email for it, and it's going to send it to the email address tied to the staff member. So in their staff profile, there's a place for email address. That's where it would go. We'd configure all these. We'd hit save. 
And then the next area here is the auto charge scheduler. This may look familiar to you. We have something very similar for classes uh, to where you can assign based on when their appointment is going to meet, you can have the system automatically assign the correct charge category. So we have single select. This is the, uh, the old method where we only assign one particular charge category. It's used for all appointments, regardless of when they meet. Then you have month to month where for each month, we choose a particular charge category and based on whether their start date is within that month, it's going to use that particular charge category. And then you have customs where you can set custom date ranges. You can say, but from this date to this date, I wanna use this charge category uh, and onward. And if for some reason it something falls outside of a defined date, you would have a backup charge category defined. I'm gonna leave this to my month to month. And from here, we're ready to go to the customer portal as customers. So we're going to go here. I'm going to go back to my home page. And everything is done here from the booking menu, just like you would go into a class or a camp. I'm going to go here into booking. What would you like to view? Class, book a party, open gym camp, you can tell from the symbol. Or we have two different appointment services here. We have private training tumbling and small group training tumbling. So I would go here, I would choose the appointment, and it tells me the next available date is Monday, January 30th. So I want to go ahead and move forward with this. I'm going to click here. I'm going to select the student that I want to book. So we're going to book Norma into here. We're going to say continue. And depending on your setup, they're either your customers are either going to see book now, which means that you have auto approved turned on for can uh, for appointment bookings. If you did not have auto approve enabled, they would see the words submit request here. And that way they know that it's a request and they're going to have to wait to see if it's approved or not. The uh, wording on the email that they received would also tell them that. So clicking on book now brings up the new enrollment screen so the customer can select the appropriate uh, appointment booking details. Enrolling this student starting on this date. Anything else we need to know, you can. they can put notes in that box, and then they would be able to select days. Um, so important to note that uh, if, uh, if this were a recurring appointment, there would be an option up here for recurring or non-recurring. Uh, so if it allowed recurring, uh, then they would be able to choose whether it's a, an ongoing appointment or whether it's just a one-time appointment. Uh, if they choose a one-time appointment, then the start date and end date would automatically populate to be the exact same. And down here in the select day section, if it was an ongoing appointment, there would be multiple time slots here that they would be allowed to choose from. Uh, important to note, any dates that are allowed to be chosen are restricted based on how the frequency is defined. Uh, so that means if the appointment time slot is created for one time, they can only choose that one date. Uh, if it's recurring, they can only choose dates that align with the day of the week that that appointment is set up to recur. So once all the details have been selected, we're going to click Add to Cart. This is going to add the enrollments to the cart. And from here, you can go back and add more enrollments or appointment bookings. You can visit the Pro Shop if you have that enabled on your customer portal website. And then once you are ready to check out, uh, you can choose your payment method. And uh, if you choose not to use the payment method on file, you would be allowed to define a new payment method. And then as soon as you click pay now, that will complete the enrollment process and create the appointment if it's auto approved. And I see here it says, thank you for your purchase. That means that it was auto approved and my family should be receiving an email about that. Now, if I have created a group appointment, so you'll remember earlier when we were in the office portal, we booked Norm Clegg into a group appointment. We did not send any appointment invitations. But if I go into the My Account page here and I look at Norm Clegg and I go to his enrollments, then I can scroll down here to the appointments and I can tell it's an appointment because this is in purple. I have the option here to reschedule to cancel or to invite group. So as Norm's uh, guardian, if I click invite group, I get those same fields that I saw in the staff portal. I do not, however, have the ability from this view to select a student that exists in the system. Privacy issues 
We don't want everyone to know who else is a customer there. So they would need to know the email address, phone number, and the name of the person they want to invite. Once they've entered those, they click invite. Those families would receive an email with the link to accept the invitation. Now, we also have the ability here, as I uh, mentioned, to reschedule. And if I click reschedule, then I can select if there is another appointment with Mr. Bucket, uh, then I would be able to select one. Uh, same with cancel. So uh, with punch passes, though, uh, from the customer portal with the office portal, redemption was the exact same as it was for classes. However, from the customer portal, it's just slightly different. There's one extra step, and that is we would click on the passes, and we have the option here, use for class, use for appointment. We would need to define as the customer whether we're, or we are expending that for a class enrollment or an appointment booking. So that is the only extra step in uh, redeeming punch passes from the customer portal for appointments. Now, again, all of this is assuming that you allow this. You cannot allow punch passes through the customer portal. There are settings for that. There are settings not to allow appointments through the customer portal. So just because I'm showing you this, uh, it's assuming that you have allowed all of this. Okay, and lastly, we have made some, some changes here into the staff portal. Because now that appointments are in there, you have instructors assigned to teach them. They need to be able to take attendance. They need to be able to evaluate. Uh, if you allow time clock, they need to be able to punch in and out for that. So in the staff portal here, whenever I log in, there is a new section called My Schedule. Now, obviously, if they go to attendance or they go to skill tracking or they go to time clock, those appointments are going to show up there. But the My Schedule part is very interesting because when they go here, they can see on any given day of the week what their schedule is. And they also have options here to go straight to attendance, to uh, skills, and um, perform those evaluations from this view. If they click on the event name, that again brings up a little bit more information about it. Uh, about uh, the appoint, you know, the name, the service programs, with the zone, everything involved with it. But also, depending on your staff member's permissions, you'll notice that for appointments, this schedule is hyperlinked. This is because if they have the permission to do so, they themselves can reschedule an appointment directly from the staff portal. They would click here and they would choose the new time that they will meet with that customer and they can choose to send a reschedule email. If they choose this, if they send that reschedule email, then the customers will receive the, the, the email that we showed in the, the office portal earlier, uh, letting them know that, hey, your appointment's been rescheduled, reach out to your instructor if you have any other questions. Okay, so those are the basics here with setting up and navigating the use of, of uh, appointments. Uh, do we have any questions uh, as a group here that need to be answered? Okay, um, I'm taking a look at the chat. Um, not sure if Makayla is still there to uh, to give any of these questions. Uh Let's see here. Um, where do they see the appointments if they are all punch pass only? Okay, punch pass enrollments still appear uh, under their enrollments. Or actually, you go to passes, and then you would see down here, uh, if you hover over a, a punch that has been done, it tells you this was redeemed on September 29th, 4, and it would tell you what appointment it was. Yeah, I do see here, is there a way to make sure because co coaches get an email when the lesson is purchased or scheduled uh, initially? It says, I only caught where they get an email if it's rescheduled. Right now, the initial scheduling email only goes to the facility as a whole. Uh, so they only get, and, and it, the instructors only get an email if that's going to change the schedule that they saw in the staff portal there to let them know that, hey, there's been a change. It's not going to meet at the time we initially told you. 
Okay, can I go back and show how to make the pricing schedule uh, when booking? Okay, so if I am, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's one of two questions there. One is a pricing schedule override, <clears throat> and one is to create a new pricing schedule if you realize that you don't uh, have the right one. So if I go into new appointment here and I'm creating a new appointment, if I get to pricing schedule and I don't have the one I need here, I just click new and it just pops up that create pricing schedule window that we would have seen if we would have navigated to the full appointments settings. So I would give it a name. And from here, uh, the, the price in column one is what you charge per time slot booked. So if this is a one-on-one -on -one appointment, this is really all we need to fill in. If we are going to have a group appointment, we would add columns up to the maximum number of bookings. Now, important to note here, if it's only going to be used, if you're going to have uh, a maximum number of three, if you have two types of appointments, there's either one one-on-one -on -one appointment or there's a, uh, a semi-private that has up to three, you only need a column three. So uh, at that point, there's really no need to define column two because based on how you handle uh, appointments, you're never going to have an appointment that just has two people. So I would say here, this is 35 and I'm going to charge 100. If there's three, they're going to get a slight discount. But at that point, whoever books that, uh, uh, that group appointment would be charged 100 and uh, if it's a one-on-one -on -one, or if you allow up to three, but people book individually, they would each be charged 35. Okay, so I'm seeing a couple more here. Uh, in the email that goes to the facility, it doesn't name the instructor. Can we add that to the email template? Uh, yes, there is a variable for that, I believe. Uh, if we go here to the settings and the setup, Oh, wait a second. The one that goes to the facility. Yes. Okay. So general settings, uh, email templates. And this would be the okay. Appointment cancellation follow up no show. Okay. New appointments. Okay. Send when a staff member creates in a book. Okay. What I'm trying to figure out here is, okay, that would be actually from the customer portal. Notification of appointment booking. This is where that one is. So we would click here. And then within the email body, we could add a field here for the instructor. And then on the variables under the appointment appointments, there is appointment instructor. You would just create a field and put that inst appointment instructor variable in there. And then whenever you saved it, they would start including that whenever you received those at the facility. Okay. Is there an option to build the account instead of making the customer pay up front? Uh, there is not from the customer portal uh, unless it's submitted as a request. If it's auto approved, it will always charge them. Uh, when you're booking from the office portal, you can just save it. And then you can create the charge or save it or save in charge. And then that will create the charge, but it won't actually collect the payment. From the customer portal, it will always collect a payment uh, if it's auto approved. Is there a setting that is punch pass only when creating a new appointment? At this time, no. Uh, that is something we will need to we need to be submitted as a feature request for a later update. Uh, right, unlike classes, uh, there is not a punch pass only option for appointments at this time. Where do you see the appointments if they are punch pass only? Right now, that's uh, based on my previous comment, that's uh, not something that's going to occur, but that is something we will consider uh, when discussing whether we implement punch pass only. Uh, most likely it would be handled the same way that we do with classes. Uh, classes uh, from the office portal, there is a setting to show punch pass only. Uh, um, believe uh, online settings. And then we would say punch pass single day only. There would be a similar setting to that. I'm assuming uh, if we implemented that for appointments and we would put a similar setting in there, or a similar filter in for that. 
Okay, uh, that is brings us up to date on the questions, I believe. So, uh, <clears throat> do uh, are we uh, do we have any? Uh, do you have anything else to follow up with there, Makala? Any further comments or? No, it looks like that's all. Okay, well, we want to thank everybody for attending. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free uh, to contact us, uh, to contact our support team. Um, or uh, please, if you're not already a member of the iClass Pro Users Forum on Facebook, uh, we would love to have you join there. And that's a great place to, uh, to reach out to your fellow uh, iClass Pro, uh, uh, other, other people who use our software. Uh, and to be able to help each other. And we monitor that as well. So we'll be happy to jump in with some answers. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day.